you get that door? If modern art teaches us anything, it is that original art in its purest condensed self is a form of communication. Julian Schnabel, Academy Award winning director and world renowned neo expressionist artist, tells us stories with groundbreaking clarity, and his latest major Hollywood film release, Morale, is no exception. The film, based on an autobiographical book written by author and screenwriter Rula Gibral, is set as an orphan teenage Palestinian girl emerges from a childhood's oasis of sanity in East Jerusalem and into the turmoil of displacement experienced by Palestinian refugees during the first Intifada. The story of her determination to protest the inhumane conditions found in the Palestinian life, facing the decision of choosing between peaceful means or violence. And now, my interview with ex-Texan Julian Schnabel. I'm not going to stretch my neck. First, let's talk about the film. What attracted you to this story? Well, I think there's a, we have a big problem and a, that needs to be solved in, uh, in Israel and in Palestine and our role in this situation, in this conflict as Americans is very, very important. And, 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 and certainly as Jewish American, me as a Jewish American, whose mother was the president of Hadassah in Brooklyn in 1948. I mean, she was the first president of Hadassah in Brooklyn. And I didn't really think too much about being Jewish or about what my mother wanted me to do as I grew up and as I became an artist. But that being said, she had always wanted me to go to Israel, and uh, I think she worked very hard to establish a, uh, a place where there would be a Jewish homeland. And I think that's a wonderful thing, but I don't think it should exist at the expense of... There was a man named Judah Magnus who built the Hebrew University in, in Jerusalem, and he said in 1936, I don't want to accept justice for the Jews based on injustice for the Arabs. So there's another way to do this, which is where we consider everybody as human beings. Hmm. And when I read Rula Jabrail's book, uh, it told the story of a family and a beautiful relationship between a young girl and her father and a woman, another woman who, named Hind Husseini, who uh, established a school for orphans in 1948 for orphan Palestinian children. Later it became a school just for girls, but uh, when Rula was five years old, her mother committed suicide, and her father, who was much older than her mother, brought her to this school, and she was raised by Hindu Saini. And she lived essentially on an oasis created by this woman who had a, a very modern and beautiful idea, which was to draw a line around these kids and say they're in a school and protect them in a war zone from uh, the horrors of what that entails. And then as she was as she was growing up, when she was about 17 years old, the first intifada started. And the kids in her school were sent out to the refugee camps to be teachers because the schools were closed. And when she went there, she observed a, a demolition of a house and, and she started to get, uh, think that she needed to do something for her people. Anyway, I thought it was um, uh, a very important story to tell, and what's really interesting about it is that we have such an ingrained prejudice and, and preconception about uh, the Israelis and the Palestinians and this, and this dynamic that it's almost impossible to tell this story. Going to see the movie is like a political act making the movie seem to be a political act and I'm not somebody that's particularly political so the question is can we tell us that certain stories uh, are is the audience in America uh, ready to and is it necessary to tell certain kinds of stories and I think absolutely as an artist that that's what my job is to show people things that maybe they didn't think about or didn't look out in that particular way and uh, see what they want to do with that information well, that would be my next question, of course. Premiering morale at the United Nations was called by press watchers and bloggers as a gutsy move, since you have been criticized by both Israelis and Palestinians for this movie. Are you actually surprised at the level of controversy 
and has it drawn you at all into the political issues? Well, first of all, uh, I don't really feel like I've been uh, uh, criticized. The word? Uh, what was the word by Israelis and Palestinians? What was the word you used? Criticized. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't feel like I've been criticized by Palestinians. Uh, whether I got, you know, whether some people want to superimpose their uh, notion or if they felt like I was too light or didn't address certain things. You know, the, basically the movie is about Rula's book, not uh, anything that's outside of that. It's me telling her story from the first person, from her point of view. And I think that that's what makes it powerful. Mm -hmm. And the, the, there are many Israelis that actually are big supporters of the films, and I think that what of the film and what happened was there, the AJC wanted to stop the president of the General Assembly from showing the movie at the United Nations, uh, but there are many other groups like J Street and uh, uh, a lot of other Jewish groups. There was actually a rabbi from the um, um, Klal, which is uh, the Jewish leadership, uh, a guy named Erwin Kula, who spoke at the United Nations also, mm -hmm. and uh, a young man named Jonathan Shapiro, who was a Black Hawk helicopter pilot who resigned his commission and was the captain on the boat of the flotilla that where the Turkish uh, man was killed. And mm -hmm. when he was on the boat, he said this in front of the people at the General Assembly that the soldiers came onto the boat um, and took an electric prod, put it to his chest, and when his feet were convulsing, they said that he was trying to attack them. So I don't think it's uh, such a... Um, uh, I think there's a lot of people, and this is not the beginning of... Uh, I'm not the first uh, a Jewish person to criticize the uh, Israeli government. But that being said, that doesn't mean that, uh, I mean, when you live in the United States, if you criticize the government, it means that you're a good American who's interested and believes that there can be progress. Uh, so, unfortunately, when somebody criticizes the policies of the Israeli government, you're seen as anti-Israeli, or somebody will say that you're anti-Semitic, which is absolutely, um, there's, first of all, they're two different things, and, not, and neither one of those things is true. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you look at a man like Avraham Borg, who was the 13th president of the Knesset, who stepped down, uh, he has uh, got some very, very important ideas, and uh, messages for people and there's a way where we can all coexist and the movie ultimately is about peace. Mm -hmm. So I've actually had a, a, a great response to the film. I knew it was going to be controversial because I thought that uh, because and that's why the movie needed to be made. Mm -hmm. But I've, there's uh, been a beautiful response from lots of filmmakers and actors and people. The critics in the critics have been pretty mediocre, and that's very interesting to me. Why? Because um, it means that the there's a kind of um, predictability and brainwashing that has gone on <laughs> uh, about this particular topic, and it has colored almost unanimously the responses of the critics. And on the other hand, you know, I'll have letters or 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 uh, phone calls or uh, or comments from different actors and directors and uh, people on the street and people love the movie mm -hmm. so you know, i've gone to movie theaters that are packed and said to them how come you're here we got a mediocre review from a.o scott <laughs> and they'll say well we wanted to see your movie and we wanted to see what you were doing like you just said to me, you know, I said, to, why do you want to talk to me? I mean, you, you said you, in Houston they figured they would be interested in something that I would do. Well, uh, I think that the fact that I guess I would be involved in telling the story is 
part of what makes people so crazy. <laughs> of course, one of the current campaigns to bring attention to the Palestinian-Israeli conflict is the Boycott, Divestment, and Sanctions, or BDS movement. They're currently attempting to bring attention and end what they call the media collaboration designed to boost Israel's image on the international stage. Do you right. feel that there has been, uh, do you feel that that in fact is true, that there is a, a media sort of uh, secret oath or something to keep anything that, that boosts the Palestinian image down? Well, I, I think that, I think, that people have wanted to forget about the Palestinians. I think I could have told a story about an Afghani family, a family Columbia, from Colombia, or a family from the Sudan or anywhere else, and uh, I don't think one would have the same uh, response. Mm -hmm. I think it's a taboo to talk about Palestinian people. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and do I think, I mean, if you think of what happened on the flotilla, and you, it, it, it was in the news for a couple of minutes and then it disappeared, I mean, it was outrageous what happened there. It was outrageous. I mean, this man was killed. Those people were not armed that were on that boat. And, and the whole um, event sort of disappeared and was, and was, and, and they actually, uh, uh, alluded to the fact that these the people were violent or were armed that were on on the boat, and I think that is a lie and a disgrace. Mm -hmm. And we cannot behave. I just feel like we cannot behave like brutes ultimately, and we cannot support that. And so, yeah, I mean, the thing is that we're, what, what we're really talking about is politics now rather than the film. We'll be right back after these words with your Open Journal staff, Laura Slavin. Don't go away. 